So today we are very happy to have uh, Song from Chicago to tell us about photoelectrization of Fermi surfaces and the collage of Fermi. I'm going to tell you about uh, uh, some work that recently done on the topics that are more relevant for it has relevance in condensed matter physics, uh, but it's related uh, um, uh, problems in condensed matter physics with the formalism that uh, is more well known in, in high energy physics here, to So uh, the plan of my talk is going to be first to tell you about Landau's Fermi liquid theory, and then um, uh, interpret the Fermi liquid theory as described by Landau as a theory describing the dynamic of shapes. I will explain what the object and shape we are interested in, and then explain why coaxial orbit is a good method. Formalism to deal with the, uh, the problem. Uh, this coaxial orbit, in our case, would be a coaxial orbit of the group of canonical transformations, something that uh, many of us haven't thought of uh, after learning about classical mechanics. Uh, and then we, uh, I will present an action principle for under Fermi liquid theory. Since this is a talk that uh, I have been given most of the time uh, in front of a condensed matter audience, please interrupt me at any time if there is something that is uh, not, uh, not, 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 not clear. I'm going to this um, paper, the paper on the basis of what um, I'm giving this talk is uh, this one done in collaboration with Luca de la Cretas. Um, he's now in, in Switzerland, but going back to Chicago as a faculty member soon in the fall. And Ishian Du and Uman Mehta, two of the students at the University of Chicago. So, um, uh, condensed matter physics has uh, um, a fuzzy beginning. But one of the events that might be uh, identified with the beginning of condensed matter physics is the theory of metal by Zomerfeld. Um, Zomerfeld constructed this theory in 1928, uh, just a few years after uh, the realization that electrons are fermions and they prove Fermionic statistics. And so, Zomerfeld has in mind a picture of a metal as a gas of free electrons that uh, uh, obeys the Pauli exclusion principle. And he managed to derive many consequences from this theory. In particular, uh, one can predict that the specific heat, of, specific heat of the electron gas is linear in T. One can derive with some additional assumption the so called Wiedemann Franz law. That is the ratio of uh, thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity of um, metal should be equal to a constant time t, you get times the temperature. And that has been very, uh, it, it, these predictions are very successful and fit with experiments. But from the very beginning, there is a puzzle in the Zomerfeld uh, calculation that it relies on the approximation of the electrons as a free gas, they do not interact with each other. But if one look at the real material, real metal like copper, and compute the potential and estimate the potential energy, which can one can do very well because we know the average distance between the electrons and the interaction is just a Coulomb interaction. You see that the potential energy is of the same order of magnitude as the kinetic energy. And how can a calculation that is based on just a simple non perturbative or simple, well, even not a conservative calculation, but a free, a, a picture of free electrons give rise to, a, to predictions that are valid even when the interaction is the norm and is all one. So this puzzle was solved by Landau in 1956. So he, uh, the essence of Landau's theory is the following that even when the interaction between the electrons is large, if one goes to low energy in, in, the, um, in, the, in Landau's language, 
if we go to temperature which are low in comparison with the temperature of the generation, so this is a per meter energy. If we go to the limit of low temperature, there is another small parameter one can use to organize the calculation. And that small parameter is the ratio of the energy or the temperature over the microscopic per meter energy. So the idea of uh, Landau then explain why it is the case that the decay rate of, a, of an excitation near the Fermi surface is suppressed by the phase space because the, uh, the decay product of this process has to be also near the Fermi surface. And one can evaluate the, uh, the, the, the phase space and convince ourselves that a quasi particle as one approach the Fermi surface become more and more well defined. Its width becomes smaller and smaller compared to its energy, like in a weakly coupled theory. So this theory, Landau's theory of Fermi liquid, is very successful. It has been uh, applied to helium-3 liquid, helium-3 atoms of fermions, uh, to electrons in metal, uh, to neutrons in neutron stars, uh, possibly uh, in quarks, Quark matter, if that is realized in the core of neutron star, some the quarks should, in some regime, behaves like an electron in, a, in, 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 in matter and possibly other systems. And this Fermi liquid theory is also the basis for further development in condensed matter physics. Yeah. On top of the Fermi liquid, one can pair up the fermions and form. And construct a theory of superconductivity, a BCS theory, but, but the Cooper Schaefer theory is based on, uh, on this idea of pairing. And in condensed matter physics, people are interested in a phase of matter called non Fermi liquids, which can be uh, constructed by taking a Fermi liquid and couple it to a U1 gauge pure. It turns out that in, say, 2 plus 1 dimension, the infrared behavior of of this system is unknown, and this class of theory or putative name for a type of infrared behavior that is uh, that arises from this microscopic theory is called non Fermi liquid. Despite much effort, non Fermi liquids remain not very well understood, and as I will, uh, as many people realize, this problem is based on the uh, on the problem with the Fermi liquid itself. It, in some sense, it's a very unusual phase. It's unusual uh, things that we normally don't see in a textbook in, 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 in field theory. In, it has, in some sense, too many degrees of freedom, as I will explain uh, a little bit later on. So this. Uh, now let's go back to Fermi liquid theory. Landau's Fermi liquid theory usually is described as a theory of free Landau's quasi particle. My experience with talking about Landau's Fermi liquid theory with people, even in condensed matter physics, is that a lot of younger people now learn what is Landau's Fermi liquid theory from two sources. One is Kuczynski, last Tassi lecture, and the other is Shankar's um, review of modern physics. Um, but Landau's theory, as described by Landau, actually is very different from field theory. Although in these two articles that people learn from try to formulate Landau's Fermi liquid theory in the more conventional, modern field theoretical language, in the, the way it was uh, uh, described by Land, it was constructed by Landau is very different, and it's instruct instructive to look back to the original formulation of Landau to see what we can learn and what can we do to make it more modern. So here is what Landau would say about a free Fermi, a free Fermi gas, free Fermi on system. So Landau said that we should describe the, the dynamics of the system in terms of a, a phase space distribution function. That is a function of time and uh, time in phase space, x and p. And one would write down a Liouville's equation like this, uh, to describe the response of a system to an external electromagnetic field. So an electromagnetic field would act on this particle as a 
to a force, this Lorentz force, and the uh, Liouville's equation tells us what is the flow of this particle in the free space. So this is almost a classic approximation. It's not trivial that one can arrive to a description of a quantum, fully quantum system of fermions from that is based on a, 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 a classical equation. But one can check that linear and nonlinear response of a fermionic system. Three fermions can be captured by a classical equation. So for example, if one try to compute the uh, two-point correlation function of the density operator, uh, one will do the following. So uh, we turn on uh, electric field, that is gradient of A0. Gradient of A0 is electric field, and then uh, write down the Landau equation, and then solve it in the linear approximation. F is equal F0 plus F, delta F. So F is a distribution function whose um, value in the ground state is just a free, free a field Fermi, Fermi sphere. So, and then delta F is something small, and one can solve this equation and get the change in the uh, uh, density. Now we know the change of density is related to the external field by a two-point correlation function, density density correlation function, which then is computed to this form. In the row, is the integral in the x. The row is integral over p of f. So the distribution. And so q is the q is the position of the number. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. So here I'm doing. Already do a Fourier transform. Okay, in, so first in, integrated in P and then the Fourier transform of the X. Yeah. The row of X. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so row, row is row of X and it's only when Q are the momentum. So this turn out to, if I'm, one can do um, a more natural calculation, since we have a free fermion system, there's nothing that prevents us from computing. Density density correlation from a developing a loop integral. Now, this loop integral, the propagator has to be a finite density, but what can be done? I want to get exactly the same formula in the limit when the momentum Q of the external probe, external field, is more compared to the Fermi momentum. The system of electrons of the Fermi surface it has a finite uh, Fermi momentum, or with the dynamics at distances is larger than one of this Fermi momentum, this uh, uh, classical equation capture the, the, the two-point function. And one can actually check that a nonlinear response at this three-point function can also be computed uh, in a similar way. We need to solve this Boltzmann equation to linear, to the first nonlinear order to find the three-point function. Okay, so a little bit about what what, what sorry, Landau did. I have a question. Yes, so, no, you, you said uh, Fermi liquid. Uh, sorry, non Fermi liquid is this thing coupled to a gauge field, but <coughs> you already have it coupled to a massive to a gauge bike, field, to, right? To, to a background field. So in, in order to couple to the dynamical gauge field, I have to add in the the the, the Maxwell term. What is it? What happened after so that? Make, is, making making the photon dynamical. Yes, yeah, so. making the photon dynamical then makes. Everything uh, non trivial because the, this field fluctuates. The problem with the fluctuating field is that in, we know how to do that in, in a classic in, in quantum field theory, it's the path integral over that field. But in Landau's theory, all we have is an equation of motion, there's no action, so we don't know how to treat a fluctuating quantum field on top of a classical. In short, that's what's the drawback of the Landau theory. <clears throat> okay, so just one thing, not very, not not exactly important for this talk, but uh, non-trivial contribution of Landau is to figure out how to modify this kinetic theory of a free Fermi gas to the case when the particles interact with each other, like electrons in metal. So Landau uh, said that. One has to introduce the so-called Landau's parameter uh, and treat this quasi-particle as some object whose energy depends on the presence of uh, 
quasi particle at different momentum, but at the same place. So you imagine a system of a lot of these quasi particles going around, and uh, the intuition of Landau says that this one part quasi particle knows that there are some other quasi particles at the same point. They maybe may have a different momentum. All these momentum are near the Fermi surface, so they are finite. So one needs to have a function that depends on the two momentum near the Fermi surface. Uh, but it depends due to ro rotational invariance in say helium three, it depends if the function of only the angle between these two variables, which can be decomposed into spherical matrices. <coughs> in practice, only a few first uh, uh, harmonics of this function are important in, and, it's not, and they are known. One can write generalize the kinetic equation and then derive even more non trivial consequences. For example, in a metal, one can have zero sound, that is a mode of the particle hole pairs that is bound into a bound state. That all can be seen in this. And the X dependence here, so this, 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 part, this extra quasi particle has a delta F distribution from, that depends on X. Distribution function of particle hole can, can depend on X. And, and why at the same X? Can there be some non local effect? Yeah. If the interaction between original particles are short range, then it will be just a function, a local function. But on the other hand, since there are gapless excitations in the system, isn't that going okay. to give mm -hmm. us some local, some long range interactions? It's uh, potentially, but what I can say is that this, if on um, the um, abrikos of Karkov Zelashinsky, you can see how this. Four point this function appears and it doesn't have this that kind of singularity. So can clean so Landau's theory is somehow Landau's guess can it's not trivial because it he, 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 his intuition told him how to cleanly separate the uh, the local physics from the non-local this gapless mode. Gapless modes are only here and this is some kind of a local vortex. Very non trivial. And it's like because of Karkov, Jelashinsky, four chapters to even went to uh, about 100 pages before we see the consequence of this equation in the linear linearization. Okay, so one thing that is very important for our uh, uh, talk is that the Landau's theory can be seen as a dynamics of a shape. Imagine that in the ground, in, in the beginning, we start our system in the, in the, uh, the <coughs> system in the ground state. There is a, in, in momentum space, there is a surface separating the pure state with f equal to one and from f equal to zero. These particles are fermions, so they cannot have occupation number larger than one. In the ground state, f is equal to one here and f is equal to zero here. If we now ex put in external electromagnetic field, the shape will remain sharp, at least to uh, some time in, in perturbation theory over external perturbation. And the x is the x is the third direction, so one thing about x, this one would be a tube, a two-dimensional tube, you know, four-dimension. It's a tube that extends in two <laughs> dimensions. Very easy. Society to imagine four dimensional space for string fields. <laughs> <laughs> and then the shape remains, uh, we, if the electromagnetic field <coughs> is uh, small, uh, regular, then its shape will change. The topology doesn't change, but it's still extended in height in two dimension. But it's cross, this is just a cross section. And the cross section itself can change its space. But this is the dynamics of this shape that we are. He wants to understand. So basically, you're saying that it can be sort of a dynamics of both stones, right? Because yeah, I saw this. I heard the statement that there are two different ways to get gapless particles, like gold stones and Fermi surface. Are you saying that they are really the same thing? That but here you see there is an infinite number of possible shape. So uh -huh. there is an infinite number of gold stones. I see. So that what we want to make precise. What does it mean? That these are the gold stone boson, and how, how, how 
and the action of this cause for the chemical cycle. So, the infinite many of them because of what is it? Different number of shapes. So you can deform this sphere best to, to make it into like a, a ellipse, or you can make a more complicated shape. You mean so because each of that deformation. It happens at this value of x and y, but then there is a shape in there. Yeah, it's a, a shape. momentum space. Yeah, in momentum space. Mm -hmm. Probably speaking, each point here you can deform it a little bit, so there's an infinite number of them. I can see that in the specific heat as well, uh, Bose, Bose gas, the boson, 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 the specific heat T, T, T cube, but only on existence is T. So there is the, the, must be a large number of modes that make T cube into T. <laughs> the Landau formula criteria that we have seen here is not a field here. As Landau described it in his classical paper, it's not a field theory. So we don't have an access to a large toolbox of effective field theory. We don't have insight from a Wilsonian viewpoint. We don't cannot think about this as a Wilson boson, for example. And of course, if we get this field theory formulation, uh, it will be useful. We, we hope it to be not only uh, new formulation, but can be useful, for example, for the problem of non permeability case. We need to, then it, it would be used or easier to couple a quantum field theory. Previous approaches to this uh, problem uh, they are, um, can be classified in two broad um, approaches. One is the fermionic effective field theory. Started with Nepaton, Galabotti, and then uh, summarized uh, in the paper of Shankar and Kuczynski. Uh, there is another set of uh, papers uh, developing an approach called bosonization. <coughs> Castro, Neto, Fratkin, and other people. It's an approach that is very elegant in one plus one dimension. Fermionics system in one plus one D can be bosonized into a boson. But in higher dimension, turn out very clumsy. That one, one read the literature and can be easily confused with different uh, notions very specific for this uh, branch of physics. Patches, curvature of the Fermi surface. And the problem is that uh, when one, bo one boson bosonizes a uh, system in more than one plus one dimension, there is an infinite number of bosons. Basically, each point on the Fermi surface in momentum space becomes its own boson. Very hard to think about the theory of this. In this talk, I'm going to limit myself to one particular uh, uh, question. Can one formulate the Landau Fermi liquid theory as a field theory with a well defined action so that varying the action with, with respect to this field, effective field, one would reproduce Landau's? Theory, Landau's kinetic equation. So the answer to this question is yes, and the method that one can use is the method of coal geometry. How am I supposed to think about it? Is it like Landau equation? It's like and classical theory. approximation, and then one should quantize this theory? Mm. One should quantize the theory. So here, at the, in this talk, it's just classical version of the, some theory that should supposed to be quantized. And in Landau language, what, what this quantization means? It means it doesn't have any uh, canonical... Uh, Landau doesn't... Let me say that Landau didn't do any... Stuff. Right, but yeah. The clear but what it corresponds to? It's clear. It's not clear what... It's, it's not at all trivial. It's not clear what... Well, the main idea is to parameter to develop a parameterization of the deformation um, that is slightly less straightforward than one would think in from the from the first side. On the, at the first side, one may just try to develop a um, parameterize the shape in terms of a height function, for example. But the more um, useful or more convenient. Uh, parameterization is in terms of the canonical transformation. That is, a state with a sharp Fermi surface, uh, a, sharp, uh, a, Fermi, um, a sharp Fermi surface can be obtained 
of a reference for this surface plane. This one by a canonical transformation in uh, in X and P space. Is it obvious that that you have to preserve volume? Yes, the canonical transformation would preserve volume. So all, all the states with the same total number of particles would be and and with the same topology of a Fermi surface can be uh, obtained by a canonical transformation from a reference state. But the volume here is not the volume in one instance in X, but the integral of that volume of the whole space. For X. So let me give you a short mathematical interlude to uh, the notion of over joint orbits. Consider a Lie group G uh, the, and to correspond to a Lie algebra which is small g. And for any element of the Lie algebra, we can exponentiate and get the elements of the. So I'm going to be very n wavy here. Working around identity in the Lie group. I can define the, uh, for any Lie group uh, an adjoint representation. So that adjoint representation is just given by the postulate, by the commutator, the linear MF from a, uh, from a generator to the commutator, that generator with the operator in the algebra. And exponentiating that, one can get a, a joint representation for the group. So roughly in, for unitary group, we will write something like u, f, u minus one. Uh, mathematicians also is, uh, introduced the uh, idea of co adjoint representation that acts on the dual space. Uh, so a dual space is a space that we, indict, uh, we, we, we define so that we can have a scalar product of a member of, a, of a elements of a dual space and uh, the algebra. So a uh, uh, vector in dual space I will denote by a small letter, by a, a small letter and capital letters of the elements of the Lie uh, algebra. And one can define co adjoint representation by demanding that if you rotate both this big F with capital F here, the scalar product is invariant. But usually, like unitary groups, it's really the same, right? Because yeah. it's symmetric. And it so for some group, we can check some some group. Uh, it's for, for the yeah. In most cases, we are not very interested in this because the representation will be the same. In our case, it will also be the case, but it's useful to make this, this distinction for the reason I will mention later. It's, it's a very structure depends on the place. Okay, so what is the co adjoint orbit? So if I take an element in the uh, dual space and then rotate it using all possible elements of the group, I will get the so called co adjoint orbit. So the co adjoint orbit depends on the uh, reference point in dual space, but all points on the co adjoint orbit, the co adjoint orbit is the same. The co adjoint orbit is, in fact, a, a coset of the group and the root that leave this F0 in back. So a simple example, but it's probably too simple uh, to <laughs> explain. But let, let me just uh, give you this example. As you, see, as you two group, this algebra is a, a three-dimensional space, and the dual space is also R3. And the um, action of S U2 on this F1, F2, F3 is just three dimensional rotation, SO3 rotation. And the dual, the co adjoint representation is also a, 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 a SO3 rotation. And so the co adjoint orbit is just a sphere, like a point, once it's rotated, it becomes a sphere. Okay, so that's the end of mathematics. And now we're going to try to think about the fermionic system. In this language. So I'm going to interpret uh, this f small f. So I'm now thinking about this small f as a uh, f. So this one. Let me try to do. Yeah. So 
maybe these slides will be easier to start with. Let me think about the group of canonical transformation. The canonical transformation, small infinitesimal canonical transformation is parameterized by a single function of phase space x and p. So x goes to x prime for x minus epsilon, the p of f, p goes to p prime, p plus epsilon. Yes. Do they need to be autonomous, time independent? Yeah, so I don't, this, there's no time here. It's just a, a transformation acting in the phase space. So this is, uh, this one can check that this preserve the Poisson brackets, structure of the phase space. One way to convince on oneself that it's the case. So think about this as an infinitesimal evaluation, evolution in time. With epsilon being time and f being the coming domain. So time evolution doesn't disturb, disturb the Poisson brackets. And this, um, you know, the, 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 this, this canonical transformation from uh, the algebra, this infinitesimal transformation, and the Lie algebra with the, with the commutator given by the Poisson brackets. So with two uh, infinitesimal canonical transformations, parameterized by two function f and g, commute to the Poisson bracket. Another uh, canonical transformation with parameter being equal to the Poisson bracket of f and g. And the Lie group is just a group of finite canonical transformation that one take, one take these elements and it exponentiate it. Or in other words, one evolve onto a finite time evolution using f as the Hamiltonian to get the canonical transformation. Okay, so now let's redefine the notion of dual space. So this F, capital F is the algebra, the algebra and small f parameterizer elements in the dual space and let's define the scalar product which is the integral over the space space of the product of small f and capital F. Looks very um, uh, trivial, but uh, the, the the useful things that come out from that is a physical interpretation. One can think about this capital F as an, a physical observable. So, like for example, the function f equal p square over two m can be identified with the kinetic energy, and the small f can be identified with the state that is given by the distribution function. And the scalar product can be thought of as the average value of the observable f in the state small f. And it's a quantum, the classical analog of the quantum coronal trace of f and f. This f is the density matrix. So little f is normalized to normalized one? So little f normalized to the total number. Total. So integral of small f over x and p can be just the total number of parts. Like trace of rho equal to one here, integral of the x dp equal to n. So the adjoining uh, and, uh, and co adjoining group uh, action look exactly the same with the choice of the scalar product that I presented. Is I just take the Poisson bracket and exponentiate, and then you get how capital F and little f changes in the canonical transformation. This, at this moment, um, uh, this, 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 in the sense, this looks like a SSU3, a SU2 group, unitary group, but this, our group is actually an infinite dimensional. Okay, so we are going to use this, uh, to use this group to parameterize the state of a fermionic system. A co orbit can be constructed by acting canonical transformation on a reference state, which we are going to choose as a ground state of a fermionic system with a, a sharp Fermi surface. It becomes remain sharp Fermi surface, but the shape of that has been distorted by the canonical transformation. So a state of a Fermi liquid in Landau's theory, this sharp shape, is a point on the coadjoint orbit. So our task is to parameterize the coadjoint orbit, try to write an action. The action would be the map from a 
trajectory on the curvature node with to a number. It's not the state is not called joint orbit. It's a point on the curvature. It's orbit. a point on the curvature yeah. orbit, and that point move in time. Yeah. So in this description, there is no more space and time. Just one point in curvature orbit corresponds to it, like to a shape on the surface in phase space, and that point move in time. You know, we need to write an action. Kind of different quadrant orbits that correspond to different phases in some sense. <laughs> different color join orbit would be different. It could be that we have a Fermi surface with a different topology, for example. And then we have to describe that. To be a different reference state. To be reference state that comprises the quadrant orbit. But here I'm just trying to do the most the simplest case. So what do you mean by the action here? Like what is the action? The action is something that we vary over the, the shape of the Fermi surface and then get the equation of motion. Classical uh, action uh, we use that we use in, in classical mechanics. The equation of motion for the state of the Fermi liquid? Or? No, the, the equation of motion could be no, maybe 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 yeah. Maybe that, that the equation of motion that govern how uh, the shape of the Fermi surface changes with time. Uh, so the state, so I have this clear state, is an element in G dual. Uh, state is an element in the uh, in the in the G dual, but more specifically on the Kova joint orbit obtained uh, from okay. some reference. And, and, and so in this case, there is only one quadrant orbit. There is or only one quadrant orbit. At this, if I just uh, <coughs> limit myself to simplest problem, one quadrant. It depends on the reference point. I guess you choose you have a joint orbit just one point zero. Uh, but you also have the non-trivial sphere. You yeah, they are all the same. So the uh, main yeah, quadrant yeah, orbit, but the theory corresponds yeah. to one, right? Yeah, but may, uh, maybe that the equivalent thing here is that we have the total volume of this region, which is the total number of particles, and the quadrant orbit are all the state. With the same topology of the Fermi surface, the same volume. Right. We want, sorry, maybe just, this is just the semantics, but. Why do we talk about quadjoint rather than adjoint orbit? What's the difference? This is from the uh, you see, yeah, this this see this 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 looks exactly the same, but um, but in the co it, only on the quadjoint orbit one can define one ingredient that I will need that is the the two form. There's a symplectic form. Symplectic two form. Symplectic form. On the quadrant orbit that is needed for the, for the construction of the action. Okay, again, this quadrant orbit is a coset, we have mentioned that. Let's try to do a simplest uh, calculation, practical calculation. Uh, how one can parameterize the quadrant orbit near the unit, near, near, near reference point? The perturbation theory, or F0. So the um, uh, let's consider a group element, which is expo this is um, exponents of some elements of the real algebra, but the real algebra is is uh, parameterized by a function, and I assume this function to be small. And then acting that transformation on the on, on, on the reference state. Give me a new state with the distribution function equal f0 plus the Poisson bracket between phi and f0. f0 we know the f0 is just a, a theta function that is uh, in momentum space depends. This f0 is just theta function of pf minus p. So this can be calculated trivially. Poisson brackets and what we find is the another theta function, but now it's, it's defaulting defaulting from the spherical shape by an amount equal to gradient of phi along the direction of p. Okay, so let me explain. This phi is a function of x and p. Okay, 
and the height function here is derivative with respect to x, but along the direction of p. There is an ambiguity in mapping the point in the coin orbit to the element of the group, because the coin orbit is a coset, so there is a whole equivalence uh, class. So you will you can be where b is the uh, transformation that 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 preserves the shape of the conic surface or the canonical transformation that preserves the conic surface. So then one can check, and I'm not going to do it here. Um, that you can use this to do a gauge fixing. Instead of having pi to be a function of x and p, one can uh, require that pi does not depend on the absolute value of p, but depends only on the angle theta. So pi is equal to pi of x and theta. So the coadjoint orbit can be parameterized near the unity, near, near the preference point, please, by the functions of space and the angle on the point surface. Angle of paper you in two dimensions. Uh, two dimensions. In three dimensions. It, it will be two angle. Mm -hmm. In three dimensions it will be two. Here we see the first sign of a scalar field that what we could be appearing in bosonization. That is the statement that look, there is infinite number of goals on both of these. It's one field but there is an index that is the point on the point surface. So let me present to you the, what, how the action looks like. So the action turned out to be to come. Is, one can check that this action gives rise to the same equation, this Landau equation. So there are two parts. So the, the second part is the energy. Energy that are associated with the even distribution function for a free fermion system is just the, uh, the, the, the scalar product of the uh, fermion energy. It could be p squared over 2m, for example, and uh, the, the f is the integral of epsilon times m. That is uh, the, the energy. And the first term is written this way. So this u is the element of the group that map F0 into F, so it parameterizes the point on the co-adjoint orbit. And this part of the action has only one time derivative, and it's some kind of resuming of uh, written terms, which can be written in an alternative way as an integral of a two-form that depends on the derivative of F along the T and the, uh, and the extra dimension. This two form here, omega, is called the so-called Kirillov constant so the convective form, which usually is defined this way. So let me give the definition of that. So we are for practical calculation turn out to be much easier to to integral to do some trick at the integral over S and then drill out in this form. But uh, a nice way to uh, right, it is in terms of a of a of a symplectic form. So if I have a coadjoint orbit and look at one form f here, a two form is a map of two tension vector to a number. So these two tension vector delta f one and delta f two are generated by two elements f one and f two of the real algebra. Okay, and this is the formal definition: scalar product of f with this commutator, which f one f two. Non-trivial statement of this definition is that omega does not depend on the choice of f one and f two. One tension vector can be generated by many, many elements of the real algebra, but it doesn't change omega. And the second non-trivial statement is that this this uh, real omega is zero. So in here we have the following situation: is we solve a problem with Landau's theory. Landau basically told us how to construct the Hamiltonian. What is the en total energy of a system given the distribution function? For free system, it's trivial, but Landau also adds this Landau interaction, Landau parameter that, that, that tells us a particle here can be influenced by a particle in a different form. That can be all subsumed into the, the, the energy. What Landau didn't tell us, but he had an equation for it. 
that corresponds with is the symplectic form. You need a symplectic form to write to, to define a dynamical system in, in addition to the Hamiltonian. You understand the form. So is it uh, obvious that omega is non degenerate? It's it's non degenerate. Um, I think it's it's um, it, it it can be shown. Yeah. Uh, because you are not all the right? because then you point yeah. to yeah. the yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm not all the Yeah, in some sense here we have a a, a, a very phase of a Fermi little. So if one think about a little bit beyond the classical theory, uh, this first term is a, a, a very phase that a fermionic system obtained when you try to change the shape of the and Landau's theory gives us that. Okay, so now I'm going to present with some perturbative calculation. So the first one is to um, expand this action that I've written to you. We call it quadratic order. The quadratic order, that action turned out to be a superposition over the angle of um, chiral boson action. So each phi here is a function of theta. And this is uh, both chiral boson moving along the direction, unit vector along the direction of theta. And one can check that this theory, classical theory, gives rise to the same result for two point correlation function of the density operator as coming out from a one loop graph in the fermionic theory. So another calculation one can do a bit more involved is to expand this theory to cubic order. And in this way, one can write down interaction terms, which now looks much more um, uh, involved. In particular, there are interaction terms that comes out from the Wesovino witten terms that, uh, that mixes, that, that connects, that couple from your different angles. So, uh, but, but this prescription that we have gives rise to a very well defined action. Once we fix the original system, for example, free fermion, very simple free fermion system becomes a very complicated boson system. Our achievement is to rewrite the simple theory into a complicated theory, but in the internal, <laughs> a completely different uh, set of variables. Now, this, this, these data are sort of the number goes on boson parameterizes the change in the shape of the fermion cell. There is no quantization condition on this uh, two dimensional action in the sample? There is. There is a quantization. Yeah, yeah so, um, so the, the one, 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 one might think that there is no because of the fact that the group is not okay. compact. Yep. So this usual way yep. he doesn't give us the quantization condition on this coefficient. Yes. On the other hand, um, one can put the system in a compact uh, phase space. So imagine that we are working on a on a torus in space, and and also torus in P, mm -hmm. which means that the underlying system actually is a lattice. Mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Then there is an argument that one can use to say, at least not to to to, to relate this coefficient in front of here with. Um, This, with some assumption, one can show that this condition has to be equal to one. Has to be equal to what? one. Not just it multiple could, of one. It could be a multiple but of one. But that has to do with the normalization of phi at zero. Yeah. It's, um, there is a, it has, has to be a, a, an integer. Mm -hmm. uh, which, yeah, I have to think very carefully to say that what can be shown. But there is a relationship between that and the periodicity of this part. I see. But when you consider this Fermi surface or not trivial part? In a phase space that has a torus. Now, one non trivial check that one can do, it's uh, almost guaranteed to 
goes through, but it's still very instructive to do is to compute three point function of density in our theory and compare that to what come out from pre fermion theory. So in our theory, it turned out to be the sum of two, three diagrams. So there is a pi cube vertex. Uh, this diagram comes out because the density at this level can also as a pi square uh, part. So this density can be much better to add these two diagrams together. And one can check that this is equal to the sum of two diagrams in the fermionic theory with two different permutations of the vertices. It's, we haven't been able to show that analytically, but we have two long formulas that give exactly the same numbers and put in concrete uh, values in mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> So there is, on the other, there is another thing that is interesting. There is a cancellation in this the two, two, the two diagram when omega is about the q, and both are small. Individually, each of the diagram is one over q, but the sum cancel the leading uh, di di leading uh, divergence. This leading singular behavior on the q cancel, and the sum is q to the zero power. In the bosonic side, both the diagram is q to the zero power. Actually, one doesn't have to compute. We just need to analyze the, the scaling of the vertices to get keep some q to the zero. So in some sense, the bosonic theory managed to take into account certain cancellation that one would not be able to interpret very easily in the Fermion equation. So I have a question related to Sergey's question. What does loops in the photonic model mean? What does loop in the photonic yeah. model mean? Seems like you only need trees to reproduce all the loops on the fermion theory. What would the loops on the photonic side be? Yeah, so I'm, I might, uh, let, let, me, let me tell you what the story in one plus one dimension. Mm -hmm. So in one plus one dimension, so in one plus one D, we know that uh, uh, relativistic, in, a ultra, in, in relativistic field, Massless fermion and bosons are just equivalent. We can show that. But if we have a non relativistic fermion with quadratic dispersion, free fermion with omega fermion, so omega equal, equal q squared, mm -hmm. it maps to a bosonic theory with interaction. In bosonic, we have pi square and then there's pi cube. So now I can see. Let's, let's compute this diagram to one function. Mm -hmm. Turn out that this, this diagram has a very non trivial behavior when omega divided by q, omega minus Fermi velocity times q, mm -hmm. is pf is the slope here, much smaller than omega itself. In this case, actually, this diagram. And this is Landau's theory breaks down. Actually, when, when if one views the Landau kinetic theory, we will get something that is not completely correct. So the bosonic, the bosonic theory, this, this would, we would have to take into account the loop to reproduce that. So this loop gives us. So Landau, it's another that Landau doesn't actually Landau. There are corners in. In, 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 in momentum space, corner in phase space, where Landau um, theory doesn't give us the correct, uh, correct. Uh, most of the, in most cases, when omega and q are roughly of the same order of magnitude, but they don't <coughs> uh, give us a correct result. But when this omega minus big <coughs> q is of order q squared, of order omega squared, we will have to take into account this. That, 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 yeah, what we have to see. And it's known already in the one plus one dimensional case, once you take into account those loops on the boson side, they resolve this issue. As far as we can see, it may resolve the issue. The reason is the following. In, in this, uh, <coughs> when this loop becomes comparable to, to the tree graph, then we, we start to have to need to sum the Result. infinite number of loops. We don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And so we, we can see that the first correction mm -hmm. is the one that uh, reproduces the differences between the exact result and the Landau result. 
so this H bar for this Poisson theory, what replaces H bar, the, the, the Planck constant? So you have a loop expansion parameter, right? And this mm -hmm. coupling constant H bar in the Poisson yeah. theory, but in the Poisson theory, most H, of the, you have already used the H. Right? No, most of the time, the expansion parameter is just the ratio of the, the momentum over the Fermi momentum. But there is some. So this, this coupling constant in the theory, they are all uh, contains the Fermi momentum. Yeah, there is a coupling constant. It looks like one over Pf, etc. Mm -hmm. That suppresses the the loop for momenta, or uh, much less than Pf, mm -hmm. uh, except for some collinear point where you have to be careful. The collinear divergences. Okay, so the Landau parameter is just a modification of the Hamilton. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, tell you what about uh, something we are currently working on, but haven't uh, written up anything. We try to expand extend the theory to 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 to, to uh, describe other um, more, some more interesting cases. So before doing that, we have to make one one one. I would like to make one comment that. Um, the algebra of canonical transformation can be thought of as the algebra of fermion bilinear in quantum theory. So this fermion, fermionic bilinear has dependent on x and p, x and y, and if we do a Fourier transform, do a Wigner transform, let's keep the dependence on the center of mass, Fourier transform over the difference between x and y, we get an algebra that in the certain limit becomes the algebra of canonical transformation. So we can think about the algebra of different fermionic bilinear and that allows us to extend the theory to to incorporate for example for example spin uh, this operator psi and psi have a spin index we can just you know, have a sigma here to Taking to take that into account, we have an enlargement of the group of canonical transformation that now has also spin. And we can extend it also to include the operator that has charge 2 and minus 2, psi x, psi y, psi decker x, psi decker y. Together, psi decker psi, they form a closed algebra, and that allows uh, allow us to, to, to rewrite ECS theory, this is theory of superconductors. That way, because in superconductor, these are the, degree, the important degrees of freedom. Okay, so let me conclude. Uh, the method of Koichon orbit provides a natural way to write down an effective field theory of a Fermi grid. The result of that exercise is a nonlinear bosonite formulation of the fermionic theory, which reproduces linear and nonlinear Fermi liquid response. And perhaps it's a suitable starting point for exploring more non trivial phases, condensed matter, for example, non fermion phases. Thank you very much. So, in one plus one dimensions, then there is finite number, this is just visual bosonization in some sense? It's turned out to be a, just a visual bosonization. <laughs> uh, so, each, each fermion point corresponds to just now one boson, so one. Left and right handed boson and can be combined. So it exactly can reproduce. So it can be, this whole story can be sort of some generalization of bosonization. In one dimension. But usually bosonization in one dimension isn't, isn't done that way. If there is a correspondence between the fermionic operator and the bosonic operator, psi equal e to the i phi, right. which we don't have in this, that, that part of the story is lacking in the. Higher dimension <coughs> now formulation. We don't know how to compute the fermionic field function. Can I use some colonization to compute the partition function? Because of the action you wrote, it has the same form as this uh, sequence severe Arish Chandara formula. Probably 
Weil im Prinzip genau so, dass ich durch eine Tabakke weiß, so, dass ich keine Süßigkeiten hier habe. So, was kann ein natürlich noch Familie durch die Wasser von dem Kredit? Das ist das, was man hat, Fixed Point Theory. Das ist schon mal, ja, das ist schon mal kein Problem. You can use that calculated funding function for this economy uh, candidate, yes. this collateral or with target school. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think, uh, Okay, one can do this for you and group. This Kirill Foskun formula. In taking Hamiltonian, you get like trace A by V. There's three submetrics. And this is, your Hamiltonian has exactly the same form. So mm -hmm. maybe one can try to localize it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are steps. For example, Sabaton, Shadashavili, this is the one that goes here. But here, we're interested in like the, there are several approach of this. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about this. Yeah. Um, and how do you couple this dynamic mode you want to be in the formal? We can couple the system to uh, actually the whole to to any gauge. Um, we can gauge the canonical transformations actually in the. The U1 gauge field is just one subgroup of the group of canonical transformation. So basically, yes, sir. So you'd be promoting the DT to the covariant theory? Like if you do have a level of the action? The level of the action, the, roughly speaking. Um, you want to promote the location of the sub model? It's well, usually you would say. Let's say P goes to P minus A. And now if A is a function of X and P. Mm -hmm. And then we have to also promote X. X plus A. But now it's different A. Now the, 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 there are six components. Yes. X plus A has, has a moment direction in the P. And there is one more thing that we have to introduce this uh, A0. That is A0, A, I, A, B. And the, the, the group is non abelian. So the uh, gauge symmetry, we have a gauge symmetry that is non abelian. So one of the sub group of that is when A, A is A, this, this, this one is zero and this one depends only on X. Sorry? A P I. The second one is a gauge field in in momentum space. There is no like, trivial. I would say so there's not the integration any one uh, just one just to the number transformation. It's a yeah the gauge field of canonical transformations. Uh, normally one doesn't do that. But, no. but but one can one can think about it this way. Um, it is a there's another it, the deep deep invariance is part of that. When one one make this to be not a function of p that can one get a can get a like a intermorphism. Several related questions. I say you can get diffeomorphic space of this map. You cannot easily get this. This formulation is not very, um, not very nice for uh, Lorentz symmetry and Galilean symmetry. So we are not able to impose that easily on at the level of the action. It should be, but I don't know. Related with, uh, if you get you one in general, the gauge field will be time dependent. So this canonical transformation is not be time dependent. Yeah, it's a when canonical it's, transformation that's time dependent. Yeah, when it's, I thought that at the beginning, uh, the conjoint orbit formulation you were assuming will be an independent. Um, no, there are two, two, two roles here. So the canonical transformation that we have been using here was two. Parameterize the state. So a state is like, take some 
different states to economic transformation in a, a new state. So and that's how we, and that can be time dependent. So the analogy of that would be the following. How do we describe a ghost on boson? We can take our state and then do a big transformation on the, on the background and get the ghost on boson. So this phi is the Goldstone boson of a, of a canonical transformation. Now we can gauge that symmetry introducing a gauge field, like in the gold one case of Goldstone boson. That's what I'm describing. <laughs> so, what is the connection between this and the zero sound? And in particular, I've always been confused in zero sound. Is there, I mean, Landau seems to imply that there is zero sound is like any other uh, bosonic field, but mm -hmm. at the quantum level, is there some sort of box space? Or you, 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 you essentially melt into the particle hole? Uh, it's just part of, the, part of the spectrum, so I have this quadratic action. So you see this quadratic action. Now, Landau says that there is also Landau parameter. So one of the Landau parameters is the integral, the integral the, 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 there is one term in the action. That's now the theta, the theta prime okay, of some function. F of theta minus theta prime. And theta prime phi of x on n of theta prime. So it's upper the density of boson in one point and the density of boson in another point, but it's like mixing some of the action, still quadratic. Now, in order to find the zero sum, we have to diagonalize this action. Now it's no longer diagonal in freedom, it's off that way, it's off that dimension. Or F, that, for example, if F that is equal to F0, and if F0 is larger than Zero, one can solve this equation and find the zero sum. It's separated from all the particle hole pair, just single out. So, in particular, you have quanta of zero sum, you have one quantum of zero sum. But it's not protected, the fact that it's one is not protected by anything. You can probably find some other example when there are more than. Just no, no, I understand what I'm saying. But I'm saying in the in the low occupation number limit of these perturbations, do you end up with a box space of you know, so no, so you you have particle hole pair, particle hole pair. So plus this zero sound. Zero sound is actually just one one. It doesn't isn't separated from particle hole pair. So it's not dominating. So it's part of it. It's the infinite number of modes fine, but one of them not more unequal than the other. So is it true that in the original uh, Landau Fermi-Lenk theory, I could describe also deformations that smooth out his surface? That smooth out the surface. Right. Don't keep the sharp. Landau theory would allow one to do this kind of calculation. Uh, yes. And so the equations of motion that you derive, are they only for these, like, perturbatively for small deformations? Or, like, um, yeah, I'm curious, can you extend this to also include these sorts of perturbations? Or, like, do I need to maintain well, I can. sharpness? On the other hand, yes, we are now in a little bit more shaky ground because for these, these are situations that normally you have to at finite temperature. Uh, first of all, there is no equivalence of this what we call so the Kopf-Zerashin scheme at non-zero temperature. The derivation of formulated from perturbation theory, from the diagram, from Feynman diagram, in finite temperature. At least I don't know this. Um, Um, 
probably if the temperature is more, one can still do some. I think, yeah, sir, I think it's one just need to take a, a different F0, different starting point in, in our theory, it would be a different uh, curvature orbit. This curvature orbit is much larger than the curvature orbit at zero temperature. So one need more parameters, more deep, more parameterization. Reducing no zero temperature in this theory, but periodic time. That, that one can do. Yeah, we can take this theory uh -huh. and then ask what is the thermal version. Uh, thermal version. Does it correspond to usual temperature? Or? So now that is this is a case when there is a UVIR mixing in the uh, steel. The reason is the following. So here the dispersion relation of this scalar uh, is completely flat in one direction. The derivative around x, but not on y. And the propagator does not depend on, on t1. Mm -hmm. So when you compute this bosonic loop, you have to truncate the integral over t1. So you truncate by say the, the size of the Fermi surface is finite, so you have to do that. So that uh, situation in a Fermi liquid theory. So I think we, we have some understanding of this, yes, where it come from. Interestingly, for the non Fermi liquid, that we are mixing disappear mm -hmm. by upward the theory to a gauge field. Suddenly, this calculation becomes finite. There's no more AR for the AR mixing. And get a very an answer that one expect. In, in this case, in this sense, the non Fermi liquid seems to be nicer, well, more when we have. Uh, let's thank you.